So those of you that didn't know, in my previous Vanguard 1944 video, towards the end, I had a secret giveaway. Not a whole lot of people knew about this, so there's only so many people actually in the giveaway itself. But let's see who wins. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Australian Sienner? You are the winner. All right, let's do the next giveaway. Predator Beta, you are the second winner. Be sure to contact me as much as possible so I get your keys out to the right people. And uh, yeah, thanks for playing. Let's get into the video. In the nuts. Oh, what? Oh, nice. I did get him. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Once upon a time, I didn't know what Vanguard Normandy 1944 was. It was a game that was just nowhere to be found on my radar. Because the main World War II games that I focused on at the time was just Postscriptum and Hell Let Loose. It wasn't until my buddy, Nox Cooperative, rest his channel, talked to me about it. The conversation went something like, do you think I should talk about Vanguard? Because he was constantly talking about and referencing Big Fry's point that games like Vanguard normally flop. This is what I said to him. Even if that's the case, who am I to stop a developer from making a game? Sure, it may not get the player base that they would like, but at least try. Throw your hook out there to see if you catch anything. And if nothing latches on, maybe try a different bait. So after I told him that, he created an in-depth video that perfectly explained what Vanguard was. And it certainly compelled me to hop on their Kickstarter. I'd link the video for people to watch, but... His channel is no longer with us. So at this point, it was just a waiting game, which will play into a major problem with the game later on down the road. But for now, let's just talk about the game itself. Originally, Vanguard was known as Traction Wars. Traction Wars was to be a more ambitious game like Postscriptum and Hell Let Loose, but the developers decided that they didn't want people to deal with what most players call a walking simulator. All too common with Squad, Postscriptum, and Hell Let Loose where most of the time you're walking to get to the front line. No, they wanted people to get straight into the action. So their main focus was on infantry versus infantry gameplay, which Vanguard does pretty well. The gameplay feels like a mishmash between Day of Infamy when the matches are full, because things can really get chaotic, but when the matches are just 5 versus 5, it feels more like a down-to-earth tactical game, kind of like Red Orchestra 2, because you really have to pick and choose your targets. The game can be unforgiving, one shot and you're out, depending on where you get hit. The matches can hold up to 24 players. At the time of this in-game recording, the only game mode that was present is the game mode Raid, where each team gets three waves of soldiers that can be called in by the squad lead, but be aware not to use them unless you need to. For example, if there's 12 players on each team and the enemy cuts you down to like two or three troops, I would call in a wave. Defending and attacking teams only get three waves, but if the attacking team captures an objective, they get a free wave. How the objectives work is depending on how many people are in the game. So if it's like a 3v3, only one radio shows up. If it's like a 6v6, two radios show up. If it's like 12 versus 12, three radios show up. Now you only need to take out one radio, but the drawback to that is is that when you are dismantling the radio, you are defenseless. So it's up to your teammates to defend you while you're doing your job. And then as soon as you're done with dismantling that one radio, the objectives will move up, telling you to push forward. But a word of warning, before you push up, check for stragglers, because there's nothing pushing defenders back except for you. The maps are gigantic. The interesting about them is that you can do major flanks and come up behind them. If defenders don't fall back to defend their new objectives, the the attacking team could bypass the stragglers by doing long flanks where they can literally show up right behind you. These matches could actually go really fast if you're not defending your objectives. As I was on the defending team, I was always paranoid that the enemy would come up behind us, especially when things got quiet. Our team was basically on 360 security at that point. The game itself only has three maps, but it feels more like 15 because they have day, night, raining, 
fogs, evening days, rainy nights, foggy days, rainy day. Like they only had three, but it, it feels like more than just three because of the shifting daytime. I've said this in the past, but it still rings true today. When you add shifting day maps to your game, it's kind of like cheating, but in a good way, because you may only have three maps, but one map feels like four because of the shifting day maps. You negate the problem of having low maps by keeping each one refreshing. It's something that I wish a lot of games would adopt because I think it would make their lives a lot easier. But what do I know? I'm not a game developer, so. Anyways, if the defending team loses all of its waves, the last person that died. Um, hey, guys. Oh! <laughs> I'll do right this time again. It's the last time. Is he on A? Uh, no, no, he's B. B. He's still B. Yeah. He's taking B. He's taking B. He's in the bunker. I'm running. I'm running. We got 40 seconds. Throw grenade in. Throw grenade in. Nah. Nice. Okay. They're, they're reinforcing. So five players against you now. Nice. <laughs> Responds with a cool looking uniform and a sniper rifle to hopefully take out the remaining attackers or try to run out the time by keeping them off the radios. It's actually very intense being the last one alive against overwhelming forces. There's a bit of lag on my trip. Oh! oh! Woo! The game itself is very gorgeous because it's rocking that Crytek engine. The maps look really good, but there's just something magical about those dark maps. I mean, of course it looks like shit on the recordings because you can't see anything, but when you're playing in game, it just, ooh, I like it. Now, when it comes to bugs, there really wasn't anything that I would consider game breaking, but obviously the ones that occurred need to be fixed. They were mostly just minor glitches where the icon would stay stuck on your screen and wouldn't go off unless you popped out of the server. It's not a very common one, but it did happen sometimes. I ran into another one where I felt like I was literally painting my screen with icons. Again, nothing game breaking, but just some annoying ones that I experienced while I was in the game. Overall, the game ran pretty well on my system. I gotta say that it was actually pretty well optimized for a Crytek game, I gotta say. But yeah, if there was anything that I was unsure about in the game, it's probably the feature of being able to talk to your teammates while you're dead. I'm kind of mixed on this one because on one hand, it's really fun to talk to your friends while you're down and out for the count, you know, cheering them on and telling them what to do. But on the other hand, the people that are dead are basically telling you where the enemies are located and it's kind of cheating, but it's not like it really hindered my experience. But then again, I don't know. I'm not, I'm very mixed on that one. But overall, Vanguard Normandy 1944 is a solid base for an early access game. And to top it all off, as it stands right now, it's only going for about 15 bucks. But I think if I remember correctly, they said that they're going to bump up the price the moment that they add more things to the game. So if you do want to, you know, decide to get this game, now would be the time because it's pretty cheap right now. So I'm going to have to say this, even though I really don't want to, because Vanguard is literally one of the better early access games that I have actually played. But I honestly have to point out that there are hardly any players playing it, which is such a shame, but that's what happens when you don't market your game very well. Vanguard Vanguard's marketing was basically non-existent. I kickstarted the game and I almost had no idea of what was actually going on. I mean, they did release updates on the Kickstarter, but every time that I would leave a comment on asking when I was going to be able to try out the game, they would never reply to my comments. So I just assumed maybe it's not ready yet. I don't know. I was beginning to think that I was getting scammed. Just going back to check the Kickstarter to see if any of my questions were getting answered, only to find that my comments had no replies infuriating. It wasn't until the clan that I was running with was adding everyone in the discord about a stream that the developers of Vanguard were actually showing. I was like, oh, okay, cool. But then I saw a bunch of people that I knew inside the beta and I was just like, what the f- What? Did I not back this game? How come I'm not in this stream? What the fuck? What the f Fuck. By bitching and moaning, my other clan members had actually told me that you had to have been a part of the Discord to actually get access into the beta, which I had no knowledge of this. I only followed the Kickstarter, which you'd think would be the spot where backers could get their questions answered, but I guess not. After hopping into their Discord, I was able to get into their beta, and it was fun and good. But one thing that I didn't know was that it was to be one of their last betas before the game was going into early access the following week. When I heard the news that basically the next week was to be the release of the game on early access, I was just dumbstruck like, wait a minute, what? 
I didn't even know that this game had a Discord, and I really haven't heard anything from this game, to be honest. I'm trying to look at it from an outsider's perspective, because the only thing that they might have seen is the very few streams that are sitting on their channel, which have barely any views. And what's also a big factor is that they launched on the day that Hell Let Loose had started up another beta, so this was obviously a tough choice for me, and I'm sure for a lot of people that were looking into World War II games, because obviously they're gonna go for the more ambitious one, which is Hell Let Loose. If they had just waited, if they had just waited a few more days, people wouldn't have had to have made that choice. But even then, they would have had to have made more of an ad campaign. I mean, bigger YouTubers were in the closed beta, like Nano and Diplex Heated, but it was obvious to me that they weren't really interested because they never actually talked about the game. Honestly, a safe bet probably would have been talking with mainstream outlets like GameSpot or IGN, maybe just one of those guys, because they, they would have at least, you know, had a decent sized audience looking at the early access, you know? But it is what it is, right? So yeah, Vanguard is a great early access game, but obviously its ad campaign was basically non-existent, making this game the most tragically underrated game that I have ever played. But there is good news, they do have a Discord with a bunch of players that do play the game, so if you do decide to get the game yourself, I suggest you join the Discord that's down in the description, because they do sessions like almost every day. Well, I hope that this video somewhat helps them, and yeah, I think that's really where I'm gonna end it. I wanna thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye bye